Hey everyone, James with TFB TV. Right now it is my absolute honor to be at Beretta in Italy. And right now I'm here with Carlo. Carlo, will you please introduce yourself to the audience here? Thank you for being here with us today. Uh, my name is Carlo Ferlito. I'm a chemical engineer specialized in lasers and materials. And uh, I joined the company in uh, January 1998. Uh, coming from an outdoor experience company that was doing ski boots, uh, skis, these type of things. And I came here to, you know, develop some new ideas and uh, after 25 years, uh, here I am, general manager of the company. General manager of the company. And what do you do in that I capacity? basically run the company mm -hmm. together with uh, Franco and uh, the Beretta family, uh, all the aspects of it. Uh, so. Uh, both the civilian part and the military part, uh, uh, manufacturing, uh, R&D, uh, marketing, uh, sales, everything. Whenever I reached out to Beretta about interviews while I was here, I said, I want to speak to somebody who knows technically his shit. And okay. I, was, I was put in <laughs> okay. touch with you. you. And, and we've, good... we've been talking over the past few hours today. And yeah. you know, I understand that you know a lot of what's going on with the company. And, the to, yeah. <laughs> and, and you do have the, an engineering background. Yes, I'm, right? a, I'm an yeah. engineer. So you, yeah. you do know your stuff. But of course I use, uh, uh, and I, I collaborate, and I have a fantastic team of people and, and technical team that uh, do an outstanding job in all their disciplines. But of course, being uh, in charge and being a very cu curious person, I don't get, uh, I need to get into the nitty gritty of the product. So I, I, it's an answer, it works, it's not enough for me. See, and you know, you're the kind of guy that I like to interview on program because we've got nerd level questions from okay. our viewers. I, I submitted this to the viewers and I asked them to send in Excellent. questions and there are a lot of really good ones, but let's give you a layup to start with to, okay. to kind of get you comfortable. Yep. What is the best gun Beretta makes right now? <laughs> Good, good question. <laughs> because we make we make so many things uh, and so in so many different layers that uh, and I don't want to be the politician that always find a way not to answer yeah, your question. Yeah. So I mean it's uh, uh, we have launched recently in Europe a fantastic gun called BRX One that is I think is uh, an interesting product that we will hope soon uh, reach also United States. That that is a very cool uh, uh, engineering object I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we'll go from that straight into the more specific questions. And by God, these are specific, but that's why we have you. Do you have any new single action, double action pistols coming to market soon? Beep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, No, sure. I mean, it's... <laughs> Stay tuned. I mean, you, you will see some, some interesting things, both completely new guns, but also the so-called modern classic. You know, mm -hmm. we come from a, a tradition with a M992. Uh, of, of uh, uh, probably the best 9mm gun ever made and, uh, mm -hmm. and we, we are going to develop around that uh, and, and some cousins, uh, some new products for sure. Will Beretta make a 10mm pistol or carbine ever? At the moment uh, it's not in our plan, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest. Uh, we have so many things uh, ongoing uh, and of course uh, uh, a company like ours that is uh, involved in, in so many areas from hunting, competition, uh, tactical shooting, uh, um, uh, you know, military, law enforcement application, etc. You have to choose your target and you love to do everything but there are more ideas than time and people to, to execute them. Uh, so at the moment the 10 is not a priority for us but we'll keep an eye on it. But it seems like 10 millimeter is only hot right now in the US Correct. market. Exactly. And it does have great ballistics. It it's, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a promising. We, we are looking at uh, the different calibers. At the end of the day, you know, the, the guns are, are, are the, the car and the fuel is the ammo. And if the fuel changes, uh, the, the car has to change. And therefore, innovation comes a lot from ammo and yeah, from calibers. Sure. So uh, every new caliber that comes out uh, for us is an interesting uh, situation, even uh, re, 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 reinventing old ones. Uh, mm -hmm. It's always an interesting challenge. Are there plans for a gun in 30 super carry? I assume you're familiar with the caliber. Yeah, yeah, the caliber is an interesting one. Uh, at the moment, we are looking into it. If we find some, because you know, the, sure, sure, with the ammo source shortage that is out there, it's quite difficult. But coincidentally, I have two boxes at my house, and okay. I don't own any oh, super okay. carry guns, so okay. I'll just send you my two boxes. Okay, you guys good. develop a gun with that. Okay, right. deal done. <laughs> so we have a plan. <laughs> no, but uh, no, it's it's a caliber that it would be silly not to look into it. Sure, uh, so I mean, we, take a wait and see approach. I would assume. Exactly. Is, uh, I think that's what most manufacturers are doing because it's like, why at this point? We have we have seen so many. 
caliber, new caliber fail, uh, but some also to succeed at the end of the day will uh, We'll do our analysis, we'll see what uh, the pros and cons are, and uh, if we see that there is uh, the possibility to go, we'll go. The innovations on our world um, sometimes come more from ammo, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's our task then to you know, develop again that uh, maximize the, the performance of that ammo. So any new ammo is an opportunity for innovation, so why not? Is Beretta going to manufacture a high capacity 10 or 11 plus micro compact optic ready handgun? Next question, please. <laughs> <laughs> Concealed carry is, of course, uh, one of the biggest uh, portion of the U.S. market. So it's, uh, uh, for, a, for a company like ours, they want to be uh, a strong player or a leader into the pistol market. It would be silly not to look into that. So stay tuned. Manner and revolvers. Uh, are there going to be any additional offerings in the United States? Because my understanding right now is uh, you've got the five inch, version, you've got the 4-inch version, 357-38. Yeah. Well, first of all, it was a great adventure to reintroduce that, mm -hmm. that product in the, in the U.S. market, and the way uh, the reaction was, was uh, outstanding, really, really great. The, the marketing team, I think, did a fantastic job in introducing it and representing it to the, to the public. So for sure, we need to expand that uh, adventure with new, new guns uh, and, new, and new options. Uh, of course, uh, the, the the theme of the last few weeks and months is supply chain, supply chain yeah. materials. Very, very, so every time you want to do something different, uh, but for sure the, the Manuran is going to be developed uh, dramatically in the future because uh, Manuran comes from uh, from a, a, an heritage of uh, uh, artisanship. Mm -hmm. um, when you are uh, you enter in a group like ours where you have, uh, and you will probably see in the next few few days, uh, the, the, uh, the level of technology, the level of uh, manufacturability that we've been able to, to introduce uh, into the firearm world, then uh, the quality will improve uh, and probably you will be able to do something uh, uh, at a more aggressive uh, positioning. That, that's what we're looking for. Shit, I can't find a Mandarin revolver. I've got the five inch. I was looking around for the four inch. The other, I, I can't even find one. We are capped uh, with capacity yeah. at the moment uh, with the demand uh, that is going up. But the, the team there in, uh, in France is, uh, is building up uh, strong uh, and uh, so uh, the, the capacity will go up. Uh, be patient. Mm, <laughs> That's sure. what I can say. The Beretta 80 series, which I think is a misnomer, it should be the Beretta 81 series. Um, but the Beretta 81 series is one of my favorites, and that was just based on a, I found for 400 bucks, I found a Beretta 84 BB, mm -hmm. I bought it, and I said, holy shit, this is a, a, actually a really good gun. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, viewers out there who understandably are, are asking, would you ever consider making another 380 or 32 in a full size or compact frame with higher capacity and lower recoil, for the US market, that's from Sarah. And essentially, she's asking, are you going to, to make something like the, the Cheetah for the US market? We, we go back to the previous question, semi out, semi, semi, <laughs> yeah. single action, double action yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, pistol. That is actually the point. I mean, that that's is our playground. That's where we come from. Where that's what we we know a lot about, and, uh, and, and we are working on it. So okay. for sure, there is, uh, there is something to keep you busy for the future. Okay. It's, it's a love, I, it's a gun I love. Uh, because of uh, the, the dimensions, uh, the, the craftsmanship that is behind it, the, um, you know, the, the shootability, the accuracy, uh, it's extremely simple. So it's, it's a great gun. And, it uh, is. Uh, I agree with you that sometimes this company is, uh, is quite uh, famous for some underrated uh, gun. I think that is a very underrated gun that can mm -hmm. become back uh, very strong in the future. What's the most underrated gun from Beretta? PX4, I think. PX4? Uh, PX4. PX4, it's a, it's a polymer frame, lightweight, single action, double action, great trigger, fantastic accuracy, indestructible. When we do military test on that gun, um, the most difficult uh, moment are the first uh, 10, 20 rounds mm -hmm. when the gun uh, breaks in. Mm -hmm. After that, uh, we haven't been able to take uh, that gun to the end of its life. Mm -hmm. It's the most durable, the most uh, you know, reliable product. Uh, no. A uh, surprise that is used by a lot of uh, military forces around the world, law enforcement forces. Uh, and for some reason, uh, you know, probably because of the striker maniac uh, 
uh, world, uh, then probably the single action, double action is not considered to the level that it could because, uh, again, you have a fantastic uh, trigger, great accuracy, undestructible gun at a very good price. So You weren't present whenever I interviewed Franco Beretta earlier mm -hmm. this morning. Mm -hmm. His answer was precisely the same as oh, really? Yes, okay. yeah, he said the, the PX4. Okay. So I, I think that's, that's funny. So I, I, viewers take note, the PX4 is indeed, I think that now makes it a fact. You know, yeah, I, okay. I, I concur uh, with the two of you and uh, it is now fact. Is the Beretta Cheetah still available for purchase in Europe? It is still available for purchasing in Europe, yes it is. Are there any plans to produce a new 32 ACP other than the, the current, the, uh, the, the Tomcat. Tomcat, uh, Bobcat, They're, again, uh, great uh, guns uh, from the traditional single action, double action. Uh, it's a caliber that we are going to, uh, to stay in and to develop in the future. Will there be any other 32 ACPs that are not a cat? Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm going to guess, I would say probably not. I know, no. you're, I, know, I, I, I know your reluctance, you don't want to disappoint. Let's say hypothetically you did bring back the Cheetah, the 80, 81 series, we'll call it. Would you also introduce the 32 alongside a 380, or is that? Well, the 380 has a, a, such a, a huge uh, market, not only in US, mm -hmm. uh, Central and South America, mm -hmm. uh, Europe, uh, that um, I would hate to go after a smaller caliber and take capacity mm -hmm. uh, from a market that uh, has a strong demand sure. of the 380. So, if it will happen, if it will happen, it will happen only after having exploited the 380. Will the PMX ever be released in the U.S. market? I can say I hope so, uh, because the, the gun has been developed uh, a single shot uh, for civilian market, has been already introduced uh, in, uh, in Europe, in Italy. Uh, we have submitted the, the product to the BATF. We had a couple of iterations that took too long for, for, for us. Uh, but it looks like uh, this iteration, this new sample, should get the approval from ATF, uh, from the ATF in the US. So as soon as we get that approval, the production lines are ready, we'll be happy to introduce it to the US market. What's going on with the CX-4 series? That's from Brandon, and what he's asking is, is it still being sold in the United States? Are there any, any plans for it? What's going on with the CX-4? The focus for us uh, in the last uh, few years has been in developing the PMX uh, because of uh, the uh, urgent need for that type of gun also in, uh, in Europe uh, and uh, in certain military, military and police standard. Uh, now that that is uh, developed, we have time to probably to go back and look at that great gun that is the CX-4. Um, and we'll see. We, there are plans around. We are, we are working on it, uh, making some protos in the hidden rooms uh, that you won't be able to see. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I hope to be able to find a, a good solution for, for, for that platform that, again, is a, is a great uh, product. What about the PX4 series? Are there any plans to expand that? Expand, I don't think is necessary. Uh, maybe tune it uh, for in the future, yes. Uh, has already three calibers, 9, 40, 45, uh, as the full size, the compact, so there are a lot of uh, violence is there of the underrated uh, gun, so um, the, the, the idea is uh, probably to you know, keep it fresh and keep it uh, modern. And at the end of the day, again, it's difficult to, to improve a gun that is almost perfect, but uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, details and, and, and we know that the, the handgun market lives of details. Sure. Light, light details that can make a huge difference, so that's where we are focusing at, at the moment. Most popular pistol? Rifle, shotgun. M992, uh, the most uh, popular uh, pistol that we, we made, uh, that we are making, that we will make. It's accurate, uh, it's reliable, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Give me an idea of scale, like what you've got, Beretta 92 is number one, the number two, how far ahead is the... Uh, right now, it's, uh, it's number two, to be honest, because the number one is APX, the, the striker. Uh, it's the, the, the number one manufactured uh, pistol in uh, in Beretta right now. Uh, that surprises me. Yeah. Uh, you 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 you. The, the world is big. Uh, true, <laughs> so, so true, so, yeah. true. Yeah, it isn't and just the, the U.S. market. Yeah, exactly. Right. But uh, it's been uh, always the the the, the M992 for, for a long time. Uh, 
uh, PX4 went very close. Depends year by year, depending on uh, the combination between the civilian market and the military market. If you, if you look in US right now, it's probably, uh, if we make 100, the 90 to M9, uh, the APX is uh, 70, 80, so it's not far mm -hmm. away. The rifles, we, we, just, uh, we just came in into the, into the hunting world in Europe with the BRX1 I mentioned before. Uh, of course, for, for, the, uh, for the military uh, applications uh, and, and tactical application, uh, the, the RX160 uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, a, is a very interesting platform. Um, very different. Uh, we, we like to be different in, in what we do, although I understand that M4 uh, R15 is the, the, the standard uh, mm -hmm. rifle. <sighs> we like to be different. We like right. to try to do and to bring to the market and the consumer something that uh, speaks a different language. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it'll be less. Uh, sometimes you hit the right chords, uh, sometimes it's not. But uh, that gun, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's fun to shoot, uh, especially the... Modular. Modular, bravo. Mm -hmm. the, the modularity of that gun is, uh, is incredible. We did a lot of work around it. Going to shotguns, I am an over and under guy. Mm -hmm. So, Silver Pigeon line, uh, all the line of the 686, the 687, uh, the 67 WLL, the entire line in 12, 20, 28, 410. Uh, all the type of, uh, you know, level of uh, beauty, engraving, uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's fascinating. It's a, it's a fantastic line of ours, uh, very difficult to make, uh, but uh, splendid. But we had numerous people ask if Beretta would ever consider making an AR-15. Uh, no, the way R15 are known to the market until today, no. Mm -hmm. uh, if we'll find the way and the right idea to do something different, maybe talking a similar language, why not? But at the moment, uh, the R15 as it is, is not a better product. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of questions about the NGSW submission, the RM277. Yep. Is that ever going to be available, do you think, to the civilian market? Uh, that is an interesting adventure, the NGSW uh, tender. Uh, you know, the, uh, we, we are in discussion and evaluating it with, uh, with our partners on, of, uh, of uh, Lone Star and True Velocity. Uh, the GAN, uh, it's an interesting uh, engineering uh, uh, product because it's, uh, uh, it's really something different, going back to what I uh, was saying before, you know, to do something different. That design is the only one that is able, with the 20 inch barrel length, uh, to be able to deliver at that distance, that lethality. Mm -hmm. I'm 100% convinced about it, uh, and that the team of, uh, of Lone Star and True Velocity, uh, together with GDB4, and, and of course our team in the development, uh, I think they, they, they try to do something really different, to take uh, a superiority into the U.S. soldier that the U.S. soldier, in our opinion, deserves. They have done a different choice, uh, see who, if they, they are right or not. Your favorite movie featuring a Beretta? Uh, for sure would be the next one coming out, but uh, until then, uh, um, I'm a fan of uh, James Bond mm -hmm. movies, so mm -hmm. I, I, I love them all. Uh, in the last one, there is a beautiful uh, scene with the RX and the GLX. By the way, mm -hmm. GLX uh, just uh, became the who feature a grenade launcher of the Japanese army. Mm -hmm. so, you know, that's, Congratulations, uh, thank you. bravo. That's, that's another interesting achievement. Um, the, so that, that, uh, so all the, the, the scenes, uh, I can remember both the scenes where you see the guns, but also the scenes where you don't see the gun, mm -hmm. where the actor or the actress, better the actress, mentioned uh, the Beretta gun without uh, actually showing it. So uh -huh. that's, that's, uh, that's cool. I mean, yeah. Skyfall, for example. Yeah, that's yeah, she said, like... I, I feel don't... naked without my, my 70 Beretta. What is happening with the ARX series in the United States? Um, not much, to be, to be honest. Uh, we have other priorities right now uh, in manufacturing. Uh, the, with the transfer of, of, uh, of Tennessee, and all the activities ongoing with the different uh, sectors uh, and areas, that was a priority that we didn't uh, put as the high one. And, and so it's at the moment is a dormant uh, situation. Uh, yeah. We are in, in, in a situation where we want to understand better that, that segment of the market uh, and understand if we want to go into that uh, to win or not. Because mm -hmm. uh, to, to go just to try it doesn't make sense. We have questions about whether or not there are going to be any variations, changes, whatever, to the 1301, or if the plan is to just leave it as it is right now. Uh, no, but, uh, 
probably as many of your viewers know, that there are limitations when you import a gun in the US. And, and so the uh, characteristic that you have been familiar on the 1301 until a few years ago has been the, to the fact that unfortunately you, have, you can import only a sport gun. Um, now we've been able with, with BATF again to uh, develop a way that the gun is partially made in the US uh, to a level that now can be customized in a more sexy way, let's mm -hmm. say, you know, with pistol grips, this type of thing. So, yes, the answer, the lo long answer for a short question is yes, we can uh, uh, do this. Uh, because now you're offering like a tactical model correct. that, which is... Before it was only for law enforcement application, right. now it's also available right. for the... Right, and you've managed to yes. achieve that through Absolutely. using American components. Yeah, correct. There. American components, American assembly, we send parts from Italy. The rest is made in the U.S. Is there a plan to make like a lower cost version or a lower cost tactical semi-auto shotgun? The 13.1 platform is of course... Uh, uh, a, a sophisticated one uh, because of the uh, level of performance uh, that, that, uh, that is required and therefore it uh, re requires a certain price positioning. Uh, in the US uh, with the new factory we've been able to launch the A4, A300 Ultima mm -hmm. uh, that you've seen uh, is at the moment uh, developed for the hunting uh, and with uh, extremely successfully so. Uh, so we are right now doing our focus group and our test to see if the, the tactical version of that could be interesting. I, I think uh, it can be also a cool solution for a certain part of the, uh, of the U.S. market. Uh, Beretta is always trying to reach different price points, as you're saying. So we are the top of the notch, but also affordable. And probably the A300 uh, Ultima could be a platform in the future for that. Carlo, I know you're very busy. You have people here that you have to see. And again, yes. I, I appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to, to do this. Pleasure. I think a great question to ask to close this out, then again, that depends on your answer. Has Beretta ever developed or had a concept of a firearm that for whatever reason just never came to be? Yes, we have a few examples of, uh, of different guns that come to my mind. Uh, a silence over and under to reduce the noise pollution in uh, in, uh, in shooting That's kinda ranges. Cool. It is kind of cool, cool yeah. but uh, after you know, it's less cool when the gun heats up too much and uh, you know it's a, <laughs> a, a safety hazard. So you stay the way you're supposed to be. Uh, although some attempts have been done by other manufacturers in that respect. Um, the first uh, polymer frame pistol that was uh, when I joined the company it was a very funny name. Fum Fupla was the name. Mm -hmm. but, uh, what, what the hell is a Fum Fupla? I don't, I don't, I don't ask me. I, I don't know. But that, that do we have a, to bleep that out? Is, I mean, is that, was, do we just what, curse in Italian? Well, what was, was a sort of a, a more a cannon more than a uh -huh. pistol. Uh, and, you know, so it was doing everything that a polymer pistol should not make. Uh, so it was big, clunky, and uh -huh. said the opposite of what polymer can do. So the, there are a few examples like that, uh, and uh, they will, and, 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 but they are still a, a great source of uh, inspiration. You know, fail fast. Uh, it's a great way to learn and to do uh, great stuff uh, that, that works. Well, Carlo, you guys clearly have figured out how to make stuff that thank works. You, uh, you it was much. one of the most successful and the oldest firearm manufacturer. And I, again, I, I know I keep saying this, but I've been privileged to have you Thank on you this James. program and, and to nerd out with you. I mean, these are the kinds of questions that I, I'm glad that they asked them. These are the same questions I would ask. So Great thank question. you for Thank indulging you me. Thank you for indulging our audience with TFB TV. Guys, stay tuned because we're going to be bringing you more from Beretta. Thank you.